Unfortunately, the Western medical system, they don't have the time or the background to really address those types of diagnoses yeah. without a medication. In fact, the whole system is made to prescribe medications to people. So a lot of times I hear that when I sit down with my patients that are in 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever it might be, like, can I do something else besides just be on this medication forever? It's so good to have you here. I, I really want to thank you for flying in to do this. And um, I, as I explained to you a little bit earlier, one of the main reasons I did this podcast was to make longevity and health span optimization more accessible for people. Yeah. And um, from the very beginning of the podcast, you know, I, I interview a lot of the world's leading experts in longevity and health optimization, but I also wanted to make this truly a podcast where people can listen to an episode and have tremendous take-home value. And I think part of that mission for me was having real people on that are experiencing this journey and have my listeners learn from them. And I couldn't think of anyone better than you. Thank you. You've done such an incredible job um, kind of curating this world of longevity for, you know, I'm going to do air quotes, the normal person. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like not all of us can spend a million dollars a year on longevity. And so I really want to um, thank you for coming and making this happen. Well, thank you for having me. I am so honored to be here. And I am just more than honored to speak with your listeners. And I hope that, you know, I can shed some light in, in a way that might help them to take action today and tomorrow. You know, those stories resonate for me because when I sit down with my patients, both of your stories, your story from your 30s and your 40s, it's very common. Th those stories are very common for why I see patients here at Nextel. So your story in the 30s is, you went to a typical Western medicine doctor and they gave you a medication for something and you thought there was something else. It can't just be, I'm going to be on this acid reducing medication for the rest of my life. There has to be other things I can do. Unfortunately, the Western medical, medical system, they don't have the time or the background to really address those types of diagnoses without a medication. In fact, the whole system is made to prescribe medications to people. So a lot of times I hear that when I sit down with my patients that are in, um, 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever it might be, like, can I do something else besides just be on this medication forever? And that goes for not just reflux disease, but like you found out for depression, also for um, lots of lots of issues, you know, high cholesterol, et cetera. Medications are there for a reason, but they also need to be combined with lifestyle changes and other, um, other aspects of your life as well. And to that point, when you said in your 40s, you were suffering from this kind of low-grade depression, I think a lot of people suffer from this, and that becomes their new norm. Yeah, and people, you don't know. You're in. Right. It's like being a frog in the hot water. You don't know. You don't know, right? And people, you know, I think people just get used to it, and they think that's the new normal, and that's how they're going to live life. But by using the, some of the techniques in functional medicine, um, which is kind of a new branch of medicine that the typical doctor doesn't really learn much about, you can get yourself out of that state and get back to feeling really good again, which is which is awesome. And so these are stories that we hear all the time in our clinic, and there are reasons why people come and see us. And it's mind-blowing to me how much nutrition, sleep, exercise, some targeted supplementation can really make a huge difference. And then I'm watching, you know, my, my dad, after my brother died, he struggled with some dementia issues as is kind of common, you know, in older sure, ages and sure. tragedies. And then my mom was having... Um, some issues that ultimately led to Parkinson's mm -hmm. and, and I'm just looking at that going, mm, like, I don't, I can I do not want to accept that as my fate. Right. Um, and just because my genetics say I might have that, I certainly don't right. want that. So yeah. let me do everything I possibly can mm -hmm. to avoid that. And yeah. so I just, you know, started researching all the different longevity doctors. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like from David Sinclair, I mean, Mark Hyman, like every, you know, what was all everyone saying about sure. longevity sure. and just going on these quote unquote triads. Right. So like I found my way to, um, Dr. Um, Anna Kabeka. Okay. And so she had this, um, menopause, breeze your way through menopause solution, for instance. And it was amazing. I mean, it was like all these vegetables, you know, like a lot of green, lots of greens, lots of vegetables and, and proteins. And, I couldn't believe, like, I dropped weight, like, 
super fast. And in mm-hmm. menopause, that's mm-hmm. really, really hard. And right. it was like within a month, I had dropped like all that extra menopause wow. weight. And this was even after I had started hormone replacement mm-hmm. therapy. So it was still like, I was really shocked. And what I learned from that was like this this idea of greens in menopause, right. the, how right. important they are. And so I kind of like, oh, let me keep that. I'm going to make sure I always have greens every day. Yes. You know, and then I found my way to Sarah Gottfried was talking about a pound of vegetables a day. And it's like, okay, let me try that on. Right. And that worked. And it was just, I was able to incorporate it. And so it's just, it's just become, like you say, curated, like from all the doctors and the, that I've listened to, all the books that I've read, all the, um, what do you say, like podcasts and all the information that's out there. I try to stay sane and mm-hmm. just like, let me go on an N of one experiment, try it out, see if it works. And so eventually I find my way to synalytics and I'm like detoxing zombie cells. I love it. The detox <laughs> zombie cells. I'm researching these things and I find my way to Novos when I was researching some of the ingredients. Right, right, and exactly. That, that was the game changer. Yeah. yeah, and that's where you kind of have gained some notoriety because you were number two on the World Longevity Board for quite a long time as far as your pace of aging goes. But before we get to that, I want to highlight a few things in what you just told me because these are the conversations I have with my patients a lot. And one of them is the concept of N of 1 experimentation. I think a few minutes to maybe half an hour, 45 minutes a day of learning is really important. And one of the things I love about you is you, you're, an, I think, um, one of the podcasts that you were on, they said they found you on Goodreads. You yeah. weren't even on yeah, social yeah. media yet. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm a avid, avid reader. I read yeah, two books every morning. morning. I've done this for 20 years um, where I read maybe five, 10 pages, depending on how much time I have from two different books, one around mindset, one around health information. Nice. And so you're a big reader as well. Yes, big time. I, I try to do like 100 books a year, but this year, because there's so many podcasts now, I'm yes. like, can I get credit for my podcast? <laughs> so, um, and just also hot tip, like I have a notebook that I use while I'm listening to books or um, or listening to podcasts. And I just write a few things down and then I, you know, go over it every so often. Like, oh, you know, I just listened to Andrew Huberman and he's talking about, you know, X, Y, and Z. And so I just might make a note like, okay, I want to go back and like, look more into this or whatever that is. That's and fantastic. so like, yeah. yeah, in fact, I was taking notes with your, your podcast with Casey Means. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's it just, I think it's really important That's just right. like get a notebook. And if you're out walking, like, cause this happens to me, I'm usually like either out walking and I'm listening to a podcast or I'm working or something like that. And I can't necessarily make a note then, but I'll just, you know, try to do a voice memo in my phone or something. And then I write it down in this I have like one notebook where all that stuff goes. I love it. I also like the timing of your journey because when we see patients here, I show them a structure that I've put together called the wellness wheel. And the wellness wheel starts off, it's 12 different aspects of your health, but the wellness wheel starts off with nutrition, sleep, and exercise, which is kind of where you start in your 30s. Then we move on to functional medicine, and then we do longevity last, right? Because if you don't get all those aspects of your health in order first, your sleep, your exercise, your diet, your hormones, your gut health, it's really hard to pursue anything in advanced longevity because number one, it's not going to move the needle, but number two, you just don't even feel like it. You yeah, know? you're just putting a Band-Aid over a chasm. Like exactly. that's, you've got to, you've got to get those basics right. And because they're going to, like getting the basics right, like cutting sugar out of your diet, eating mm-hmm. vegetables, like um, I, I learned from eating vegetables and a lot of protein. I didn't know this, but I found out later that it's a natural GLP-1 agonist. Yes. It's like, and I and I can say, like, by the time dinner comes around, I'm not even hungry and I'm, I'm kind of force feeding just to get the protein in, you know? Right. So a lot of times it's just a liquid dinner because I'm, but so why skip to add, you know, like paying for a GLP-1 ag- yeah. agonist when you can like get it for free? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Essentially. Exactly. You know, so you can, yeah. you know, I mean, hey, maybe you still need that later on and I'm not yeah. negative on those at all, but I'm just saying once you get the basics right, they're going to shift your hormones. They're going to shift all of these things for, in the positive direction so that the therapeutics that you need are much less. Yeah. And so you're saving yourself a you lot of money. You might not need it. You're saving a lot of money because you might not need it or you need a lower dose so you have less side effects and you can get off them faster as well. So we prescribe GLP-1s here all the time, but we don't do it unless someone has the basics down correct because I don't care how much GLP-1 you're taking. If you're still going to fast food every single day and you're eating mostly you know, refined carbohydrates, you're never going to get off of them. And so we got to get your diet in order first, or at least get you educated. I want to double click on one thing that I think is also very important. 
you don't have to do everything all at once. Like you've been on this journey for many years now, since your thirties, you were saying. And so it takes time, but if you make a few simple changes that last because they fit your program of having the intention, the why, and the resources, resources, you can do them for a long-term basis. That's what really moves the needle is doing certain things, small things, maybe in fact, for long periods of time. Is that right? Yeah. So I think what really shifted for me when I shifted to the longevity mindset Mm -hmm. was like, wait a minute, I'm going to do this the rest of my life. And so it became about building a cathedral. Like that's Mm -hmm. my thing. This, and I know people have complicated relationships with religion. So maybe, you know, think of building a house or, you know, I don't know, the Burj Khalifa, like any, any great architectural monument is built step by step by step and takes time and planning. So, you know, um, I just always try to think like, can I, like, I'm just laying one brick. What is this next brick? You know, Mm -hmm. so, um, I'm trying to think what am I working on right now? Well, I've got this new ring and um, mm-hmm. which so that was like my first piece of tech. I feel all, you know, fancy because I haven't had any tech. And so right now it's like just kind of learning how to use it, what it's telling me, you know. And so that's kind of the brick that I'm working on. Yeah. Um, part of it, you know, so there's some other things. But like like next year, my goal is to um, be able to do a pull up. You know, so I'm not trying to do like the 10 weeks to beach body anymore. Right. Like that was right. such a recipe for failure. I mean, it really was like, it, even if you succeeded, it was like, it just created this stop, start, stop, start, stop, start in my life. And so when you just kind of look at, okay, I'm just, I know that like, ultimately I want to be here. What are all the steps, you know, kind of dividing it into tiny little steps, like any great architect like again I'm a structural engineer so that's how I think like I'm gonna build something yes you know and so like what are all the steps to get there and I'm just gonna take it step by step by step so like you know if you are not eating well right now then you know the step is like just eat a carrot just Mm -hmm. add one carrot or one vegetable that you enjoy or go to the farmer's market or the grocery store and like for me what worked and with my son was like one we made it adventurous like Mm. ooh, what is this we've never even seen this before i'd take him to the grocery store you know we were living in dubai so we'd have food come in from like all over so we were trying like exotic fruits exotic vegetables things that we had never seen how do we prepare it what is it and then color colorful is like Mm -hmm. really really important yeah absolutely you know one thing that um you touched on and i think another way of just saying what you just said was the science of habit formation. And one of the kind of rocks I look at when we're trying to form habits is not to have a goal. Let's de-emphasize away from goals, like 10-week beach body, is really creating systems that you not just achieve the goal, but they last beyond the achievement of the goal and you just do them forever. Yeah. Like brush, I always say it's like brushing your teeth. Like exactly. you wouldn't leave the house without brushing your teeth. So right. you clearly build a habit. Right. You know how to do it. Right. It's exactly. Like, so it's just, it's, yeah, it's just step by step. You know, if you're not moving, you got to just do 10 minutes. And like, I'm kind of a big thing on like, I'm going to make sure that I get that habit down for like four months. Like I, yes. I know there's like different studies, but Way back when I had read a study, it was 16 weeks to form any lasting habit, Mm -hmm. which is a long time. But again, if you're looking at like, this is what I'm going to do for the next 50 years, or if I'm lucky, I don't know, 70 years, you know, um, why not put it on the longer time scale? I always say if you can do three to five things for an entire year, that's so much better than trying to do 50 things all at once in in January, you know? Exactly. Just pick three to five things you're going to do for one year you're going to make those three to five things a habit for this year. Yeah. And then moving forward, that will continue with you. And then just pick three to five things every year. That's such a much more sustainable program than just trying to do everything all at once. The way I look at it is um, this pace of aging test is a really good scorecard, like I said, of all the combination of everything. But in reality, aging is a culmination of chronic diseases, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you can avoid all the chronic diseases, that's what's really going to improve at least your health span, right? And that's what it's all about is improving your health span. So you live up to an older age and you're not sick, right? You don't want to be a frail little old man, little old lady, right? Or have Parkinson's or, or have Parkinson's. You know, I mean, it's just, it's awful. Exactly. Yeah. And so looking at your standard biomarkers is very helpful there. Um, hemoglobin A1C, fasting insulin levels, HSCRP, marker of inflammation. Yeah. And those are all brilliant for me. Exactly. So you, you've got those right where you want them. You have them optimized. And now you're looking at pace of aging as kind of that 
level above where you're just now on this wellness journey and you're constantly trying to even improve upon that. Yeah. So I think that's a really good way to think about biomarker testing is let's get all the chronic disease markers right first. And then we start looking at pace of aging when you're on this part of your journey where you're just constantly optimizing now.